You are watching the Dog Talk Show. Now, Uganda, lucky as we are, but we have a prevalence of 4.7 or 4.6 thereabout mm -hmm. of hepatitis B. Um, now, that alone is not a problem, mm -hmm. but the fact that this condition can predispose you to serious conditions like liver cancer and scarring of the liver, which we want to call liver cirrhosis makes it a very important thing. And the country is actually trying to beat so many targets. And this is talk we've had from years back about mm -hmm. hepatitis B. Mm -hmm. uh, you're choosing some specific regions in mm -hmm. this country. And to mention, we have Chigezi, uh, Nkole, Tororo, Unyoro, and Uganda. Mm -hmm. uh, to specifically screen and vaccinate against hepatitis B. What is driving this? Okay. Uh, what is driving this is, in 2005, mm. a seroprevalence survey was done, and it was found that H, um, hepatitis. Hepatite, hepatitis B mm. was uh, mostly, uh, had high levels of occurrence mm. in the West Nile region, in the north, and in the east. Mm. So the Ministry of Health started interventions against hepatitis in those areas to screen to vaccinate and enroll into care. Mm. Now, we moved in phases, phase one, phase two, phase three. Mm. The regions where we are now mm. are in phase three and has phase four. Mm. And uh, this is an activity I would appeal to the people in those regions to take very seriously because hepatitis B is a disease which is already targeted globally mm. for elimination. And uh, hepatitis is more serious, it's as common as, as malaria for us mm. in the Asian region. Mm. So globally, there's a lot of focus and it is proved that we can actually eliminate this disease. Now, the global target is that by 2030, that's uh, 10 years, 10 from, years now. from now, mm. uh, of every 1,000 people you test, you should only find in one person. Mm. 1,000 people. That's, that translates to about 0.1%. Yes, that's 0.1%. Mm. Now, the, this program for vaccinating against hepatitis started in Uganda in 20, uh, two, 2002. We are looking at 18, 18 years. years. So the children, Ugandan children who are 18 years, Bebazukulu. Bebazukulu. Yes. this age group is a unique age group because if you screen them for hepatitis, you will only find, you will, the prevalence now is 0.6. So that's proof that the vaccine the is vaccine actually works. working. Because, because they are getting it from the time they are born. Yes. And by the time someone makes one year, they have got the, the, a full dose of hepatitis B yes, protection. Yes. And this is a very high success. Mm. Because if you ch check hepatitis in that group, you, you only find six out of 1,000. Mm -hmm. But for us, you will find about 40. Oh, yeah. Mm. You will find four, actually 46 out of every 1,000. 4.6. That's more prevalent than people that have diabetes yes. in this country. Because yes. diabetes is about 2.2, 2.3. Exactly. Thereabout. But you see how much suffering it causes. This is big. Mm. So... You, you, will, you see that the, the, the age group which is, which, vaccinated, which is vaccinated through the routine in childhood, mm. they are safe. Mm. Now, we are moving for older people, 19 years above, who did not benefit from immunization. Mm. We test them. Those who are found positive, we will work them up and start them on treatment. Mm -hmm. And the treatment, the medicines are there. It's available and it is safe. And safe. You begin it early. And even manufactured in Uganda. In Uganda. Yes, we are among With the guarantees countries. from government. Oh. We are one of the few countries in Africa which manufactures this mm. medicine. Mm. Now, those who are found negative will vaccinate, mm. will vaccinate them so that hepatitis is not any one of their problems. So... The areas which we counted, the Toro region, Bunyoro region, Buganda region, Kigezi, and Kole, these areas are where we are now focusing. In addition to the package of the child, integrated child health days, we are also screening. And 
the child health days is just used as the start and it is supposed to continue. We are going to run that program for about six, seven months. Mm. We should have finished vaccinating the adult population there and we now concentrate on managing those who are positive. So the country is making very big gains already. Yes. We are ahead of our targets. And you who have not been screened, please show up and get screened. If you merit uh, the, the vaccine, you definitely get it. And the good news is that government is providing medication that is safe. Actually, we, we have surpassed the 2020 target. Mm. The 2020 target was to have 1%. Yeah. But now in our bazukul, we have moved to 0.6%. So an extra 40%. Yes. So we are doing And 2030, I'm very sure, we will have uh, attained that uh, elimination target. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, what do I stand to gain as an individual? Um, can't I live with myself unvaccinated? Does it affect my country and community in any way? Now, this is, uh, we look at it uh, uh, from individual level. Mm. When you have a child with any of these diseases we are, we are pr protecting against, mm. starting from leprosy, TB, uh, uh, the whooping cough, diphtheria, mm. Mm. tetanus. Yes. Myself, when the first time as a medical student, I saw a man who was suffering from tetanus. Mm. Oh. I went to the antenatal wing. Unsightly. I went to the antenatal wing and started. I asked for <laughs> tetanus, so yeah. a vaccine to be given. Yes. So it helps you as an individual mm. to be sure that this is not any one of your conditions. In the era of road traffic accidents and mm. so on, mm. it protects you. Mm. And then, uh, as a country, as a community, mm. when you lose a loved one. Or when you have a relative who needs to be taken maybe to India because mm. he has a cancer, mm. he's going for liver transplant. Mm. It is few people who can afford that. That's when it's so it will hit the family mm. unit. Mm. Some people sell all their savings of life to treat someone who is also going to pass anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a very painful side of things there. And as a country, the, 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 when you are treating abroad, mm you are going to have to send out your forex earnings. Right. Lost the, you, are, the, the, you are going to spend outside mm -hmm. and money which you would have used for educating the, the, the citizens, mm -hmm. money for developing, mm -hmm. will be moving in the wrong direction. So if you prevent, it benefits all the levels, the individual, mm -hmm. the, community, the family, the community, mm -hmm. and the country. So the Abazukulu and the parents... <laughs> There's everything to gain in having your child and yourself protected yeah. from these killer diseases so that apart from getting sick, we can go and do other things. Yeah. We can enjoy yes. our parties or, yes. or go to your home in the village. You can divert those resources and yes. put them to, to very good use. Dr. Juwali, yes. Yes. and you speaking as the Minister of Health, the country is watching. We are in October. What message do you have for these health facilities? What message do you have for that leader down at the grassroots of this country and these regions that are specifically being targeted, what message do you have for the schools and, uh, and for the parents? Okay. What part are they supposed to play in the weeks that are remaining before we conclude this month? So my first appeal is to the parents mm. because this is an intervention to save our children, mm. to ensure that they are safe, they are healthy, they do not have preventable disability and they grow to their full potential because they are our future. Oh, yeah. Future of the country, future of the community and future of the family as oh, well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the responsibility is, rests on the individual. And as it is in the constitution, it is the individual responsibility to do what it is, what, what is required to keep healthy to promote health and prevent disease. So the so, parents are allowed to take it personal here. Yes, you take it personal <laughs> because it is a personal responsibility mm. and it, is a, 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 it borders on responsible parenthood. Mm. So that is my message for parents. Mm. The second message I have is for community leaders. Mm. The community leaders, mobilization of communities for health services, for disease prevention interventions is a service 
which as leaders we are to provide to the community and show them where these outreaches are supposed to be uh, uh, organized and also provide support to the healthcare workers who will come to that area and need communities to be calm, to be organized, mm. Uh, water will be required for hand washing. Mm. People have to observe social distancing so because of scientific. COVID. So to keep it scientific, mm. that is what where you can help mm. uh, the the you can help the health workers. Mm. So these are the village health teams, LC LC ones, parish chiefs, and health assistants. Mm. Now the health facilities, we are asking two things out of you. Mm. Number one, make all the effort to ensure that you visit every parish under your jurisdiction mm. two times in this month. Mm. Even if you cannot finish them in these remaining two weeks, you can spill over into the month of November. Mm. Number two, ensure that immunization services and indeed the package defined in the Integrated Child Health Day are provided on a daily basis so that you do not miss opportunities for people who come to the facility for other reasons. They should also benefit without having to go to another area. Thank you very much. We are waiting to see you at these Integrated Child Health Days. You don't need to be a little child, even adults. There's a package for us that we shall get. Dr. Diwali, yes, sir. we are a country that is proud of our scientists. And COVID is here but we are not quiet, we've staged the fight, and I'm sure we are having so many efforts to have a vaccine uh, running. What steps have we taken? How close are we to getting? Shall we beat Donald Trump to the vaccine? <laughs> yes, uh, this I think is one of the rare moments to be proud of our country and the effort we have put in containing the disease and flattening the curve. Mm. But now we have moved into community transmission. Uh, this calls for more action from individuals. Mm. And we must continue wearing the mask, social distancing, mm. and, uh, and sanitizing. Vaccines, the global community is making a lot of effort mm. in ensuring that vaccines are available mm. and also ensuring that people get the vaccines regardless of whether they have money or not. Mm. And these discussions are ongoing and uh, the timelines we have for a possible vaccine deployment, mm. not, not the research side, mm. use of vaccines for COVID pre prevention, mm. uh, the timelines are from uh, uh, April to June next year. That's close enough. So That's close enough. What you have to do is to keep your social distance, sanitize, wash your hands, and put on the face mask when you're out in the cows and not with right. family. Dr. Diwali, what are your parting shots? My parting shot is, is that uh, the services which we are providing is uh, our commitment as a country to ensure that we reduce preventable sicknesses, uh, disability, and death. And immunization is one immunization program is one such a disease uh, prevention uh, intervention that has results which we are harvesting. So I would encourage uh, parents to listen to sources which are authoritative as far as immunization work is uh, concerned, as opposed to picking clips which are on social media and at times very diversionary. We will inform this country when we have any information which is not satisfactory. Thank you very much, Dr. Juali. Thank you. My viewer, you have a chance to prevent 1,200,000 cases of cancer of the cervix. You have a chance to screen and treat people with hepatitis B and C. You have a chance to prevent 17,300,000 Ugandans from walking around with, with worms. worms. <laughs> Please take a chance and go and participate in these Integrated Child Health Days. And together, we shall have a strong country. And together, we shall grow and transform the world and transform our lives. Till next time, Dr. Joseph Ogabu Jagenda, your host. Thanks for watching the Doc Talk Show. 
The Dog Talk Show. 